Zach Osmer from the Indy Star joining us now. Zachary, how are you doing, brother? I'm good. How about you, Jim? I can't complain. Just I'm inside, so I'm not freezing my uh ooh, almost said my Xavier Johnson's off, but that would have been a bad joke, huh? <laughs> but uh I already said it. It's out. Uh <laughs> Indiana taking on a Minnesota team tonight that is not your uh, your grandpa's Minnesota team. They're three and one in conference play. Haven't played as tough a schedule as anybody else, but you have to respect any and everybody in in the league. That's just uh, what you have to do. Indiana coming off of a a very very poor performance in so many ways, and even with that, they are a four and a half point favorite tonight. They. They're in assembly hall, so that gives uh, that's probably worth three points by itself. And they obviously play a lot better in assembly hall. Most teams do play better at home, but they've got to get I don't know if it's get out of their heads or what, but they they just seem kind of dysfunctional right now. Yeah, I don't know if they seem dysfunctional to me so much as they just, I mean, they. They just look like a young team struggling to find consistency, which is kind of what young teams, you know, tend to do. Most of them, not all of them. Some of them can can play through it. Some are built a little different. Some are just so talented that, you know, it just kind of comes no matter what. But I think a lot of them, you know, struggle to find, particularly away from home. You talk about playing at home. Yeah, it's usually easier. You're sleeping in your own bed. You've got your own fans. Your routine's not disrupted. There's no, you know, there's fewer distractions in terms of, like, you know, student sections and whatever else. I think um, – you know, and I don't know. I got some criticism for saying Indiana was a young team on Tuesday. I, I, I mean, you know, they're they're 222nd in Division One experience per Ken Palm. They're 264th in minutes continuity. So I mean, like they're 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 pretty young. Um, <laughs> well, there's no and, doubt that they're young. I think that the I issue that, is that they shouldn't be young. Well, I mean, I think you everybody's going to that be, in the off season. Well, I think everybody's going to be a little younger in the in the portal era. Also, it's it's worth saying like this was always going to be a year of roster turnover for Indiana. We knew Jalen Huchifino was leaving. We knew Trace Jackson Davis was leaving. We knew Race Thompson and Miller Cop were out of eligibility. So there's, you know, basically your top four players from a season ago. All it takes is one or two players deciding they want to leave via the portal, and suddenly you end up where Indiana is, which is half your roster is turned over. And so you wind up with a team that's not just maybe young in years, but it's also young in years together. And a lot of these guys haven't played – a lot of basketball together when you compare, for example, Race Purdue. Thompson and Trace Jackson Davis, or you compare, you know, Trey Galloway and Trace Jackson Davis or whomever. Um, I think that teams like that just tend to, yes, they tend to play better on the road and they tend to look worse on, or excuse me, play better at home. They tend to look worse on the road and they tend to basically just kind of struggle for consistency. And I think that's where Indiana is right now. I think what makes a game like Friday important, among other things, I think, first of all, you at least have to find that consistency at home. You at least, you know, if, if you you have to give yourself that platform to say, hey, here we play well. Here we sort of, we, you know, the things we do, we make sure they work and we, we just kind of stay on top of it. And that gives us a platform to build on, you know, as we slowly try to, you know, sort of amass the habits that let you go to an Illinois and put, put in a good performance or an Ohio state and put in a good performance or even a Penn state or a Maryland and put in a good performance to look at some of Indiana's upcoming road games. The other piece of it is you just, you've got at some point, Indiana has got to start adding some quality wins here. Um, and Minnesota's not necessarily one though. I don't know exactly where they are in the net at the moment. Um, but Purdue certainly on Tuesday would be one. And I'm not suggesting Indiana could overlook Minnesota. If anything, I think Indiana's got to be prepared for a, a pretty feisty sort of effort from Minnesota because you talk about it's not maybe what we expected from this team. They are 12 and three. They're three and one in the Big Ten. But I think that there's an extent to which, even if Indiana is maybe not, you know, vintage Indiana, so to speak, right now, I think there's an extent to which Minnesota winning at Indiana would feel like a statement to Minnesota. And it would feel like, you know, I think to Minnesota, it would feel like saying, hey, this is where we are now. This is what we're capable of. Don't take us lightly. So I think Indiana's got to be ready for a really, really good shot here from Minnesota. Um, and it's going to be interesting just to kind of see how the Hoosiers handle that. Because the other thing is Minnesota got the whole week off. This was one of uh, Minnesota's – everybody gets like two built-in off weeks this year. And this was this was one of Minnesota's. So. Um, 
you know, is, is Indiana kind of prepared for that? Is Indiana in a, um, in a mind frame where it, you know, it's, it's, it's moved past, it's learned from and moved past the Rutgers game and it is prepared to take this game deathly seriously because I think Minnesota is. You were the first to report that uh, the Big Ten had, uh, I guess, viewed and decided there was no additional punishment needed for Xavier Johnson for his uh, transgression at Rutgers in which he was uh, kicked out of the game. Um, The question has been lingering, will there be anything from Mike Woodson uh, and, and, and if so, is that going to be done behind the, the, the curtains or is that going to happen tonight in some fashion? And I, I don't think, I think he starts. I don't think that there's a change in the lineup at all personally. Uh, but we will see. Yeah, I think, I mean, as you said, the big 10 is not going to view it, which it wasn't a huge surprise. I mean, you know, it, it is, it is worth saying, I mean, um, Ejection is a pretty stiff penalty, <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and I understand like when, when you see what Xavier Johnson did, you know, you absolutely understand why the referees kind of got to where they got to and making that call. But the point is like disqualification from a game is, is a pretty stiff penalty. It, it, it Especially from lot. the first half. There's, I mean, there's, there's not, there's not a lot that you can do um, in a, in a basketball game that gets you ejected. And so that's already a pretty stiff penalty. Mike Woodson has broadly, you know, the, the the one glaring exception is that Northwestern game in his first season up in Evanston. Broadly, he has try, you know, tended to keep a lot of that stuff behind closed doors. I'm with you. I, I, I guess if you made me, if you if you told me to guess, if you just said what do you think will happen, I don't think we will see any more sort of forward facing punishment for Xavier Johnson. I'm I'm pretty confident in saying there has been more uh, in some form or another, but. I, I don't know that it's going to include, you know, some sort of um, punitive action this weekend. Maybe he starts on the bench, something like that. I don't know. Um, but I would be surprised if it's anything major. Uh, Minnesota's best win coming at home over Nebraska, but that was early. And they're currently on like a seven-game winning streak. And I think that that started their winning streak. And while Nebraska is a good obviously a good team. They just beat Purdue. They beat Indiana. That's never happened for them. They're, they're, they're hanging that banner. They're probably hanging a banger banner for that. Um, but Minnesota beat Nebraska, who is a good team. And so they came back that, from down. I mean, they were down big in that game too. Nebraska was up 10 or 11 points. Obviously that was in Minnesota. Minnesota. Minneapolis. Nebraska was up 39 to 22 and lost that game. So you get a sense for how Minnesota was able to kind of scrap its way back. Yeah, and so uh, Indiana is going to have to find a way to get around their issues, their shooting woes, uh, the free throw shooting, I I don't understand, but it's basic things that has really been the downfall of this team. Free throws, turnovers, rebounding. I mean, those are all just things that are almost what you would call forced, unforced errors. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's funny, like, the rebounding part of it, I mean, Indiana has never been under Mike Woodson an elite rebounding team, despite sort of its its size. And I mean, like this. And that's know, not again, a good thing, though. If you want to, well, and it's, I mean, it, it is reflective. I mean, if you go back to last year, Indiana was 19th in the country in average height, according to Kim Pomeroy. This year, the Hoosiers are third. I think it's reflective of of the way teams have chosen to attack Indiana, which is basically to take a lot of jumpers and and sort of reach for a lot of long rebounds, knowing that Indiana actually tends to have more players on the floor that will gravitate toward the rim and will, you know, will will camp, you know, under or around the rim for those sorts of rebounds rather than the long caroms. And, uh, you know, that's kind of a philosophical discussion that, that you know, probably is, is a little bit more just preference and style. The other two, I mean, free throws, I, I don't think Mike Woodson would sit here and say anything other than like Indiana's just got to be better with free throws. You know, they're, they're last in the conference in league games alone. They're only hitting 60.7% of their free throws. That's not nearly good enough turnovers. I think, and and this, all this stuff kind of layers together. I've, I've always felt that in, in most cases, turnovers are a symptom of something else. Either your personnel is not good enough or you're trying to play too fast. I think in Indiana's case, sometimes it feels like Indiana is committing these turnovers because it is, it is feeling sort of a pressure on itself to be better offensively, to 
you know, just not necessarily chase games. Cause I mean, you look at that Rutgers game, for example, they only lost by nine. I think what was Rutgers Rutgers led by 13 at one point, but it was a back and forth game for a lot of that game. Um, you know, it, it, it's more, I think the pressure Indiana feels cause it understands it struggles sometimes to, to score the ball. So you got to feel like you force things and then, you know, mistakes compound on one another. It's little things. It's it's traveling in the lane. It's you know, it's it's just stuff that stuff that should be sort of easier to avoid. Um, but it is stuff that, as you said, it's you know, I mean, if you're Mike Woodson, I think you're you're holding up the stat sheet from Rutgers and saying, "Fellas, you held them without a field goal for the last four minutes and forty seconds. If we take off." two of these turnovers and we make five of these free throws and one more three, we win the game. That's it. That's all. That's all we're talking about. And five more free throws, Indiana would still be nine of 15 from the line. That's not very good. But the point is five more free throws, one more three and take away a couple turnovers. And that's probably a 10, 10, 12 point swing. And, and so I think that, you know, the flip side is if you're a coach, I think justifiably, I don't think this is, I don't think this is smoke and mirrors. I don't think this is like snake oil stuff. I think just to say like, we're not as far away as you think we are. If we just, you know, we're, we're, we're losing these games on the margins. You limit these mistakes here and here and here, and we will be better. And you go back to like an Ohio state game, even, even accepting for the fact that Ohio state really tore Indiana up on the glass and exploited that particular weakness in Indiana's game. Indiana is 75% from the free throw line. Indiana is five of 12 from three. Very efficient. Didn't take a ton of them, but very efficient. Indiana only turns the ball over four times. Indiana wins the game. And so this is where I say again, if you are Indiana, you've got to look at every home game as an opportunity in a more friendly environment with your own fans and your own shooting, you know, your own sight lines and your own shooting windows and all these different things to put in good performances that improve some of these things that you feel like you can build on when you do go away from home or when you face a Purdue or whatever it might be. It's just, it's, you know, I know that everybody kind of wants there to be a magic formula, but it, it, (laughs) I remember I covered the nationals as an intern years and years ago, and they were very bad. That was the year they, uh, I think they won like 56 or 58 games. It was the year that they got the rights to draft Steven Strasburg, number one overall the next year. And we were interviewing Dimitri Young, who'd obviously played on that Tigers team that was really, really bad a few years earlier that I think still owns the record for most losses in a season. And we said, is there, you know, is there nothing you can do? Is there nothing you can change? Is there nothing that you can sort of alter in your daily process as a team to get better? I think in particular, we were asking about hitting. And he said, really, there's not, you know, it's just like you, 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 it, 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 you've just got to keep putting in the work, keep getting in the cages, watch your swings, watch your film, study your pictures, all that different kind of stuff. And somebody said, is there no magic formula? Like, is there really just no magic formula for, for figuring this out? And he paused for a second and then he smiled because Dimitri was always a good quote. And he was, he was a funny guy, probably still is. I shouldn't act, I shouldn't talk about him like he's not around anymore. And he said, well, I guess Bud Selig took care of all that, didn't he? And he was referring to, uh, you know, some some pharmaceutical enhancement. But his point was, it's baseball. It's been baseball for 100 years. You know, yeah, there's stuff you can do, but it's against the rules. And I'm not suggesting Indiana should break the rules. What I'm suggesting is people want there to be magic fixes. There aren't. You've just got to keep hammering away at it. Every once in a while, you can try and, you know, do something a little different. But, you know, we see movies and we assume there are these Hollywood moments where everybody gathers in a dark gym and has some sort of honest conversation with one another. And that's, you know, that 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 triggers some turnaround. It, it's just it's it's finding a way to build better habits that build more consistent performances that eventually build you into a better team. And. You know, frankly, I think we saw this a little bit last season with a team that I would argue was better and, and almost certainly was was more um, was more talented and more experienced. Um, it started at home. It started with that Wisconsin game, with that Michigan State game, with that Ohio State game. It started by building those kinds of performances at home and then allowing that to travel on the road to your Minnesotas, to your Michigans, to your Purdue's, et cetera.